And here we go, here we go. On this Monday, it is the fourth day of April 2022. Real Talk Memphis is on the air. Very happy to have you with us uh, for the next 60 minutes or so, where you will be both uh, informed and entertained. Should I think a joke of a joke or two between, you know, points in time. Uh, this is uh, your humble host, Chip Washington here. Glad to have you uh, with us, as I stated before. Hope you had a good weekend. Hope you had a uh, pretty good seven days since the last time uh, we were able to uh, chat with uh, each other. Uh, we have a good show for you tonight. And before we get into all of that, uh, there are several ways you can actually reach us. Uh, first and uh, foremost, we're live on the following. Uh, 91.7 on your FM dial, WYXR. Uh, we are also live on the WYXR app. Just go to it and hit listen live and you'll hear us. And uh, we are also live on the TuneIn app, T-U-N-E-I-N. And yes, uh, we do this little thing called Facebook Live. And uh, a bit later on, we will post the show once it's over to YouTube. And finally, as we are a podcast, uh, you can hear us uh, anywhere in the country. After they post the show tomorrow, coast to coast, wherever you get your podcast. So now you are in, informed, at least from that aspect of things. So today is April 4th, and it is a very significant day, not only in uh, the history of Memphis, but the history of this country. Uh, April 4th, just about this time, 6 o'clock uh, in the evening, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., standing on the balcony of the Lorraine Motel, not too far from here across Crosstown Concourse, and uh, he was uh, assassinated. Uh, he died officially about 7 o'clock, um, about an hour after uh, he was actually shot. That, of course, uh, changed uh, the world, I would say, uh, for the impact that uh, he made right now, uh, as they do each and every year. 54 years ago today, uh, he was killed. They are uh, having a special uh, memorial uh, ceremony for Dr. King at the Lorraine Motel. It is going on right now. Uh, so, uh, you know, if you're in the vicinity, if you're in your car and you happen to be listening to us and you want to swing by the National Civil Rights Museum, there's a pretty good crowd down there. Uh, Dr. Reverend Jesse Jackson is here. Several other religious leaders are here uh, as well to commemorate uh, this day. Before we move on with this show, and I think we have a pretty good one as we start yet another month, uh, we do what we always do. We celebrate you because, you know, you only have one birthday a year, except for those of you who are greedy. You might want to, you know, take two or three days. But you generally have one day of uh, the, the year that you, you know, celebrate, you hold aside for your birthday. And we like to celebrate you and that trip around the sun that you made. But we can't do that until I say, hit it, Jack. Happy birthday. 
Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday goes out to the following uh, folks. A lot of people today. Emily Harrison celebrating her birthday today. Happy birthday to you. Latoya Danielle Williams. Jackie Hyman Manson. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Tyrone Power Easley Sr. Dave Allen Brazelton. The Hot Spot Wing Cafe. I guess they're celebrating a work anniversary of some type uh, today. Uh, Carrie Ham Lassane. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Bonnie Green. Dietrich Parrish. Vicki Butler. Jatonia Jordan Branch. Ludora Cooper. Tammy Warren and Lola Wood. Happy birthday to each and every one of you. I hope it has been a special day and I hope it will be a special evening. And we hope you join us next year or we can join you next year as we celebrate another trip around the sun. Thank you, Jack. So we uh, referenced uh, a couple of minutes ago what everyone knows this day to be. It's a very sad day in, uh, in, in American history. Uh, we also had uh, another, I guess it would be notable to Memphis, Des. I, how many of you are familiar with uh, Stefan Smith? He was a local comedian here in town. Clean, he was an award-winning uh, you know, comedian, did a lot of shows, and uh, uh, you know, fairly well-known. Well, he was uh, tragically killed in an accident on March 31st uh, of last week. So we send our uh, sincere condolences to his uh, family and uh, his uh, colleagues and uh, all of his friends and all of that knew him best uh, for sure. Very sad, the situation. I never knew him, knew him personally. We corresponded on Facebook a few times back in the day, but uh, I was very shocked and uh, surprised to hear uh, of his uh, passing. Uh, before I move on, uh, I wanted to say, a specific, we're doing shout outs. Uh, I wanted to shout out all of the 221 people who have graciously decided to be a member of the Real Talk Memphis Radio Show fans page on Facebook. It's on Facebook, uh, so I'll say it again. It's kind of a long title. Real Talk Radio Show fans page. It's my page. And, uh, you know, you, you, just, you just go there and just become a member. I'm not charging you. I'm not charging you yet. Maybe one day down the road. But, but right now, you can get in on, on, on the low discount price of free. Just go subscribe to the page, support the show. It shows your support and, you know, tell a friend if you like the page, if you like what we do, you know, check us out. And, uh, you know, I would really, really appreciate you. But thank you for the ones who have done it uh, so far. Let's get into some news and notes, shall we? Uh, Very tragic uh, scenario. And I don't know if I will ever get past the point of one day not being able to start the show by saying something tragic has happened in this city. Uh, But uh, a 13-year-old girl is dead after being shot at the Cedar Run Apartments. That was last Friday evening in Hickory Hill. Uh, It's become our city's new reality. Kids getting mowed down every week. We're always mourning the loss of a child, you know, under 18 years and under. It seems like every week this was a a 13-year-old female. Um, At least eight children, and this is the first week of March, um, first week of April, I'm sorry, uh, eight children have been murdered in this city this year, according to police. There were four suspects apparently running away from the scene of the shooting of the child, uh, and police are still looking for those individuals. Remember I told you a week or so ago about uh, Section 8 housing? Housing is a big issue in this town, but the lack of affordable housing is a, is, is a big issue in this town. And uh, the... Uh, the folks at the Memphis Housing Authority, you know, had a uh, had a sign up um, that uh, you could go online to register for uh, Section 8 housing and uh, to be put in a put in a, a waiting list uh, for, for Section 8 housing. Uh, they anticipated thousands and thousands of applications. Uh, we are going to actually my first guest is going to join me in just a few minutes. His name is Dexter Washington, another Washington in the house. He is the director of the Memphis Housing Authority, and we're going to talk to him about that. And we're going to talk to him about the housing situation in Memphis and how and what they are trying to do to make things a little bit better in terms of that and ease some of that pressure. Uh, so stay tuned for that in just a few minutes. Uh, the early voting uh, situation in Memphis is a big election this year. You know, the primaries in May, 
and the general is 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 in uh eight, uh, is in uh August, excuse me. Well, early voting starts uh, Wednesday, next Wednesday, day the 13th. And uh, there are some early voting issues. Uh, three Memphis groups have filed a lawsuit against the Shelby County Election Commission, uh, alleging violations of the Open Meetings Act, the Tennessee Constitution, and the Voting Rights Act of 1965. What does all that mean? It basically says that they think that the commission's decisions will disenfranchise minority voters throughout the early voting in the upcoming county election. They only have one site uh, that will be open uh, for the first two days next week, which is Wednesday and Thursday, uh, and that's the downtown location. And as I said, early voting begins on the 13th. Uh, Then it decided to open five other sites, the Agri Center, Arlington Safe Room, Baker Community Center, Dave Wells Community Center, and the Glenview Community Center on the fourth day of voting, uh, early voting. And uh, no other sites will be open until April 18th for the May 2022 primaries. I am efforting to get someone from the uh, Shelby County Election Commission on the show next week to talk about this particular issue because this is, uh, this is, this is interesting and it could cause a lot of folks a lot of problems down the road. Katanji Brown Jackson uh, is on her way to become the first associate Supreme Court justice uh, of color to ever hold uh, that uh, esteemed uh, position. Uh, She went before the Senate uh, House Committee today and they split down the middle 11 for and 11 against. Uh, But basically, they're going to have a vote sometime toward the end of the week. Uh, which is uh, looks like it's going to be favorable for her to be confirmed as the next associate P- Supreme Court justice. So there was a uh, mass shooting. Uh, it was really last night. I think it was last night or night before last in Sacramento, California, where six people were killed and uh, 12 people were wounded. Uh, there was some sort of an altercation at some big event, public event. And uh, somebody started pulling out guns. They don't know exactly the meaning. The law enforcement folks don't know exactly how all this broke out or how many guns were used. But six lives were taken, uh, innocent lives were taken. They did make one arrest in this case uh, this afternoon. So we will follow that and, uh, and uh, let you know kind of what happens. So how many folks out there, uh, show of hands, uh, are into the show Yellowstone? Anybody ever heard of the show Yellowstone? It's a, it's a Western show. It's on uh, Paramount+. Plus. It's a big deal. That show is, uh, now see, Nicole's looking at me like I got three heads. You like the show? She's heard about the show. Lola, you heard about the show? Lola's busy traveling all over the country. She don't have time to watch local television. But anyway, uh, <laughs> Yellowstone, it's big in my house. I can tell you that, boy. If, if, I, if, if I did not uh, um, know anything that was going on, it's like the fourth season. Uh, of the show, and they just started streaming the fourth season. And uh, you, my wife is a huge Yellowstone fan. A lot of you all out there as well. Uh, they are going to have a season five. Uh, may uh, hit the uh, airway sometime later on this year, maybe first part of next year. We'll keep you posting. And finally, in sports, uh, your Memphis Grizzlies are officially in the NBA playoffs. And uh, they don't have an opponent yet, but they're going to finish in the uh, number two seed. Uh, the tickets go on sale for one and two games, one and two, starting this Wednesday, April 6th at 10 a.m. So get down there, you know, camp out and do whatever you got to do to go get you some tickets. All MVP season ticket holders can get their first pick with a pre-sale on April 5th at 10 a.m. So Grizz are in it to win it. So go Grizz and show your support. I'm sure the uh, FedEx Forum will be absolutely jam-packed and uh, the national championship for the men's basketball side will be decided tonight north carolina versus kansas so who you got anyway hopefully it'll be a good game i actually wanted duke to 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 wind up you know shashevsky's you know 40 plus year career as a coach in the then the finals but did not happen can't crowd with spilled milk time to move forward Speaking of moving forward, as I said a few minutes ago, we have some really great guests. The first guest is uh, joining me after the first break is Dexter Washington, the director of the Memphis Housing Authority. And we got a lot to talk about in terms of the housing situation here in Memphis and uh, Shelby County and what his office is doing to try to help uh, you all out and some of the programs and things that they have uh, going on at the Memphis Housing Authority. 
We are going to talk a little bit later to Worth Morgan, a District 5 city councilman. Uh, a lot of issues going on in the city of Memphis, a lot going on, and uh, we had not had a city councilman on the show in a while. Uh, so I thought I would uh, extend the invitation to him, and he is graciously accepted. So we will be talking to Worth Morgan uh, in uh, just a little bit. And uh, before uh, we move too far, did you know that April is National Donate Life Month? Now, that means something to me. It didn't maybe three, four, five years ago, but it does now. It's National Donate Life Month. And uh, to honor that, uh, we are going to have a man uh, on the show who uh, I've gotten to know a little bit uh, in, in, in the process of donations and, and the whole process. His name is Lee Giovanetti, and he's going to join me in the second half hour of the show. He is a kidney donor, and he's going to talk about uh, his story and why it is important for maybe all of us to think outside ourselves for so many who are sick. We are going to take our first break, however, and uh, when we come back, we're going to get into the show. How about that? This is Real Talk Memphis. I am Chip. You know who you are. We'll take our first break. We'll be right back. If you like Real Talk, here's a way you can get involved. Do you have a show topic idea or suggestion? Want to be considered a guest or have a guest idea? Then send Chip a message on his Real Talk show page and you can be a part of the Real Talk experience. So as he always says, go out and tell somebody. We'll be right back. WYXR Stereo Sessions, presented by Nexair and Memphis, continues on with the Grifters' 1994 rock opus LP, Crappin' You Negative. Sit and listen in the state-of-the-art Memphis Listening Lab as hosts Jimmy Ink and Andrea Lyle press play on the pivotal local cult classic. The free event is made possible with a grant from Humanities Tennessee, along with support from Orion, Memphis Listening Lab, Via Productions, Fat Possum Records, and Shangri-La Records. For more information, visit WYXR.org and subscribe to our weekly newsletter for RSVP announcements and updates. Get Real Talk on the TuneIn mobile app under WYXR, and he's now streaming live on Facebook. And you can also catch a rebroadcast on YouTube. Just put WYXR in the search box and hit subscribe. Now back to more Real Talk with Chip Washington. And welcome back to Real Talk Memphis on this Monday, April 4th. 2022, uh, we were talking before the break a few minutes ago just about uh, one of the housing, uh, the housing situation here in Memphis uh, is not unlike housing situations really all over the country, but we live in Memphis and so we focus on Memphis and Shelby County and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's challenging here. Uh, but uh, we're thankful to have an organization that is dedicated to trying to uh, alleviate some of the uh, pressure and some of the issues that folks face. And I'm very happy to have uh, with me the uh, director of the Memphis Housing Authority. His name is Dexter Washington. Yes, another Washington. And uh, Dexter, thanks for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Hey, thanks, Chip. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, we, we, we see stories all the time. We hear stories all the time, uh, you know, Dexter, about about housing issues and housing shortages. And if you look around this town, you know, they're, 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 they seem to be building left and right and right and left. So there, there, there clearly is no shortage of need uh, for for affordable housing, uh, which is what you all deal with. Recently, you all had a had a program, the Section 8 vouchers. And we'll talk about that in a minute, that 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 that. Uh, sign in and that that the whole process there but talk to us a little bit about the challenges uh that are faced by folks trying to find affordable housing here in memphis and shelby county right 
So, you know, right now, like other cities across the nation, Memphis is just in a very tight rental market. Okay. And a part of what is driving that uh, 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 shortage is we just have more demand than we have housing supply. Mm -hmm. And right now, and, and yes, you do see some construction, you know, around the city. Uh, not all of it is for everyone that can afford it, you know, so. Uh, Memphis Housing Authority um, serves a population of nearly 11,000 households, uh, about 2,500 in our public housing program and uh, just under 8,500 in our housing choice voucher program. Mm -hmm. And the households that we serve, you know, are of low to moderate income individuals. So, um, you know, it's just the, the, the issue is just, you know, trying to find housing that fits the income for, for those families. I was talking to somebody the other day about about uh, this kind of in general, and I was really surprised to hear that uh, many people, many households, and let's talk about the the, the lower income households, uh, end up paying somewhere thirty percent, maybe forty percent of their of their total household income just to keep a roof over their head. Is is there any accuracy in that statement? It, it is actually, and and that is how. Um, uh, HUD defines affordability, housing affordability is 30% um, of your adjusted monthly income. So, um, and, and, and we generally try to keep households from exceeding um, the 40% mark. And that, and I know I get it, that sounds like a lot, but, um, you know, we have some households that, you know, where particularly in our lower in income families, where, you know, the only income may just be a SSI check you know, mm -hmm. or it may be, um, you know, uh, employment income, but, but, but just, it's just not very high. So, um, but yeah, those, those are the rental uh, affordability uh, guidelines. If you're just joining us, we are speaking with uh, Dexter Washington. He is the uh, director and he heads the Memphis Housing Authority uh, here in our city. And we're talking uh, about uh, some of the challenges that many folks face in terms of affordable housing uh, in the city. Now, uh, Dexter, tell us about the the uh, the event that you all had, a pre-application process uh, that you all had recently in terms of the Section 8 voucher program and, and, and what that's all about. Right. So it was, it was just time for us to open our uh, Housing Choice Voucher Waiting List, or a.k.a. Section 8. Uh, we last opened it in the fall of 2017, and at that time we got about 30,000 applicants, of which we uh, randomly selected 15,000. And it took us nearly five years to work through that waiting list. So oh uh, we wanted to decrease that number uh, this year so that it wouldn't take so long to get through it, and we can open it up a little bit sooner to uh, allow for more opportunity. So we opened the list uh, uh, Monday morning, um, March 25th. And I'm sorry, March 21st, and we held it uh, open for five days until the 25th at five o'clock. During that time period, we um, accepted uh, just over um, 26,000 uh, pre-applicants. Uh, right now, we're going through the validation process to see exactly how many applications that we have. We have to make sure that we don't have duplicate applications mm -hmm. and that all of the applica applications that we receive have valid email addresses so we can contact them in the future. So you'll whittle that down to how many? Did you say? I'm sorry if, I, if you did. I yeah, so, so the new waiting list will be um, uh, 10,000. So it'll be a random selection of 10,000. Uh, pre-applicants uh, that will go on the, uh, on the new waiting list. Do you think that it's going to take um, about as long as it took uh, in, from the initial you know, time you did this back in 2017 to be able to kind of filter through all of this? No, that was, the, that was part of the strategy for making the list smaller this go around. Right, right. Is, is that we didn't want to you know, wait another four and a half years before we took uh, more applicants in for the program. We anticipate that we will get through this list in two to three years rather than four to five. Okay. So um, I have a, a question that was asked me on my uh, Facebook Live line here, and I don't know if it's something that you can address, but I'll ask it anyway. A constituent mm -hmm. would like to know how long does it take or how long it takes to be approved for the FSS program? Okay. Um, and what is that, by the way? I'm sorry. What, I, don't, <laughs> I, don't know what that, I don't know what that is. Okay. So the FSS program stands for Family Self-Sufficiency. 
And it's a program that we um, operate on both our public housing and housing choice voucher side okay. that allows um, residents to, as their income increases, rather than that um, increase in income impacting their um, their tenant portion of rent, mm-hmm. we escrow the money that would go for the rent increase. And we uh, work with the tenants to make um, goals for what they want to use that escrow savings for. So. Some of our tenants, you know, want to use it to further their education. Some, you know, uh, have uh, home ownership in mind. And so they want to use it for a down payment on their house. And mm-hmm. so uh, the the program helps to um, save for those goals and also uh, prepare them for whatever the, the end goal is. Well, that's interesting. And, and, and speaking of that, um, as I was going uh, through your website, you have a lot of programs um, yes. that, that, that really uh, that target uh, various uh you know, types of individuals or type of individual needs. Can you kind of go over some of the programs uh, that are available through the Memphis Housing Authority? Sure. So, of course, we have our traditional uh, public housing program where uh, MHA or some of our development partners own and operate uh, facilities where we have public housing units. Mm-hmm. Um, it, we also have you know, our housing choice voucher program, which we provide subsidy for our residents to find housing in the private market with private landlords. Uh, there are different subsections of our Section 8 uh, program, our Housing Choice Voucher Program. Mm-hmm. Uh, one is called uh, a mainstream voucher, and it allows assistance for uh, non-elderly individuals with disabilities. Uh, another program is the Family Unification Program, where it um, looks to provide assistance for individuals that are aging out of foster home, foster care. So, um, and, and then in addition to that, right now, Memphis Housing Authority is, because of change in regulations at HUD and also uh, just um, there, there being a, a, a growth in the Housing Choice Voucher Program and not so much in public housing program, uh, we're we're doing what what's called a RAD conversion for some of our public housing sites. RAD is a program that HUD offers called Rental Assistance Demonstration, mm-hmm. and what it allows us to do is to switch the funding platform from Section Nine, aka public housing, to Section Eight, um, where it's just a more stable platform uh, moving forward, and it also allows us to um, uh, make wide scale wide scale renovations to a lot of our public housing uh, properties that just have uh, uh, collected deficiencies over the years. We only get so much money per year in mm-hmm. capital funding to make repairs. And so it becomes a cherry picking contest. Okay, do we replace the roof or do we replace carpet? And, yeah, and you know, and those yeah. things tend to build over the years. But this this program allows us an opportunity to make wide scale changes uh, across our public housing uh, development. So there are some uh, some some uh, available options, uh, you know, that you all offer. And before I let you go, please uh, let it uh, let our folks know how they can reach you via phone, via email, or uh, how they can contact you for any information or questions that they may have. Absolutely. So uh, the main line for Memphis Housing Authority is five four four eleven zero two. Okay. Um, and additionally, if you have uh, questions related to the housing choice voucher program, you can call 544-11, I'm sorry, 1347. Um, and um, if you, uh, of course, need to reach uh, any of us by email, we have on our website at memphishousing.org, uh, we have um, uh, uh, email addresses for all of the departments that, um, that, that you would need to reach. Absolutely excellent. Dexter Washington, uh, Director of the Memphis Housing Authority. Dexter, thank you for coming on Real Talk tonight and talking with our listeners. Really appreciate you. And if there's uh, anything that you want to share uh, with our audience uh, down the road, programs or other things that we should be made aware of, you're always welcome back. I really appreciate it. Thanks, man. Have a good night. You too. All right. Dexter Washington, ladies and gentlemen, the director of the Memphis Housing Authority. Yeah, that's uh, as he said. He was, you know, very straight up. You know that we do have a lot of issues uh, in this uh, in this uh, in this city and uh, in this county in reference to housing and uh, Section Eight housing. But the Memphis Housing Authority is there to try to help uh, in any way they can. Before I go to break, uh, two things. Uh, Lola informed me that uh, we are in the midst of Ramadan. So happy Ramadan! 
And if, and if, if now if I wasn't supposed to say happy Ramadan, don't blame me. Blame Lola. I'll give you her contact information after the show. Uh, speaking of that, also. Uh, I want to say hi to Sarah Gum. She's watching. Shalisa Cox is uh, checking us out, as is Cassandra Corbin Blake. Uh, my son David is checking us out tonight. I guess he must like this show a little bit. Uh, David Mann is watching uh, as well. And I know I saw him on here. There he is. Uh, Carlos Rogers Sr. is checking us out tonight. Thank you all. Appreciate it. If you haven't signed up, go to the, uh, uh, what's the name of it? Real Talk Memphis Radio <laughs> fans show page and uh, and uh, become a member. We're going to take our quick break and when we come back, we're going to talk city politics with uh, city councilman Worth Morgan. This is Real Talk Memphis. We'll be right back. If you like Real Talk, here's a way you can get involved. Do you have a show topic idea or suggestion? Want to be considered a guest or have a guest idea? Then send Chip a message on his Real Talk show page and you can be a part of the Real Talk experience. So as he always says, go out and tell somebody. We'll be right back. From 6 to 8 p.m. Job candidates will gather with educators of all experience levels and network with school officials from across the city looking for teachers, administrators, coaches, support staff, and more. RSVP information for the free job fair is at teach901.com. Grammy Award-winning folk band Punch Brothers, led by mandolinist Chris Thiele, take on the Germantown Performing Arts Center Wednesday, June 22nd. Tickets are available now to see one of the most decorated modern string bands. For more information, visit MemphisPresents.com. Get Real Talk on the TuneIn mobile app under WYXR, and he's now streaming live on Facebook. And you can also catch a rebroadcast on YouTube. Just put WYXR in the search box and hit subscribe. Now back to more Real Talk with Chip Washington. And welcome back to Real Talk Memphis on this Monday. Very happy to have you with us and very happy to have my next guest with us. And I, I have to admit, uh, having uh, been to more than my share of uh, Memphis City Council meetings, they have a lot to talk about and there is a lot on the plate. We're a big city and there's a lot of things that have to be addressed. And I'm very happy to have uh, with me tonight, this is the first time he's been on this show, I'm very happy to have... Uh, District 5 City Councilman Worth Morgan joining me on Real Talk. And uh, Councilman, thanks so much for being with us. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me, Chip. So, you know, we when we think about, uh, you know, everything that goes into running a city uh, of this size, uh, there are there's a lot that goes into it. And there are a lot of challenges as well. And uh, you all, members of the city council, are really the, the deciders of a lot of what goes on around, uh, around, around here. Tell me, if you will, uh, how challenging it's, it's been uh, so far this year and what you are going to have to tackle as, as time continues to move forward. Yeah, no, obviously the challenges we're facing in that are pretty immense in Memphis. Uh, and there's some of the things that we face are things that societies have been dealing with for hundreds and thousands of years, as long as you've had government. Um, when you talk about economic development, you talk about poverty, you talk about crime. Yeah. And then obviously the pandemic of the last few years uh, was a new wrinkle that no one expected. Right. And no one was talking about, you know, when they ran three or four years ago. Um, it, and so you hope uh, that you've got enough people that run for office that are good, that are qualified, and are able to you know, work through these issues and you have a functioning government. Obviously, um, we have got 13 people on the council. Sometimes we're in agreement about what needs to be done. And there's not a lot of debate and we can move forward, but sometimes it's a, it is a split vote and it's not you know, one side and another. Sometimes you've got 13 different opinions and, it's, and it can be very difficult to navigate. The big, the big focus for me has and always will be uh, public safety. Until we get that under control, 
I think especially what we've seen in the last two years, we have got far too many victims that are being created in our community and not enough accountability. Um, and it all begins with accountability. And this is uh, from the small issues, whether it be you know the litter and the illegal dumping that's going around the city uh, to juveniles who are acting out at a level that we hadn't seen before um, to, uh, to even the heavier stuff when we're talking about the shootings and the murders that again are reaching levels that we haven't seen in 15 years. You know, we, we, we end up, you know, we talk about that and I, I opened my show with an unfortunate, uh, uh, new statistic or another statistic, uh, in that a 13 year old, uh, female, uh, child was killed, uh, over the weekend at an apartment complex in Hickory Hill. And, and, and you're right. Uh, we're starting to see, I think, uh, a level of violence that uh, is almost becoming uncontrollable. And it's not a me problem. It's a we problem. And I know that every time something like this happens, you know, everyone wants to get together and have a conversation about it. And what do we do and, and how do we fix it and how do we solve the problems? But, you know, I mean, it seems like we're burying a, a young child in particular, you know, every week. And I know you, you're a father of, of some very young children, uh, that this, uh, you know, has to trouble you. I know that public safety has, has been a big issue of yours, but but in particular, what we've seen and the level of what we've seen, the level of disrespect for law enforcement and just for each other all around has really got to trouble you some. Yeah, and I think my friends and family that are listening would be surprised to, say, to hear you say that I'm the father of some young children. I haven't had kids yet. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, All right. <laughs> got, got married two years ago. My wife, uh, my wife and I, we've got a, we've got a dog, and we haven't we hadn't started the family yet. But, no, I – I apologize. I, 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 think, I apologize for that. I'm sorry. And I'm coming towards the end of my time on city council, uh -huh. you know, with term limits, um, uh, no matter what, you know, what occurs this year. And – I think the, the number one thing I'm going to look back on that is going to be the most difficult is that we haven't been able to move the needle like we needed to in order to protect the community. I mean, it hurts. This is something that keeps me up at night. Um, and we had, we've had votes in front of the city council, I think, in terms of public safety that could have made the, the streets safer, that could have done a better job for the community. And we haven't always been successful. In two weeks, the mayor is going to present a budget and we're going to see whether public safety is a priority. Um, we are down a lot of officers. And no matter what you want to pursue in terms of the future of the Memphis Police Department, um, in terms of community policing, whether it's broken windows theory policing, all of these different uh, strategies, you can't do it without an adequate number of officers. And we are so short right now uh, that, that really it's our department that is handcuffed rather than the bad guys. If you're just joining us, we are speaking with uh, City Councilman District 5, Worth Morgan, is joining us on Real Talk. And, and again, Councilman, I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. uh, forgive the faux pas about your children, because <laughs> but, but, I, but if I clean it up, I say, I think when you and your wife do decide to have children, if that is the plan, you'll be a great father. So anyway, we'll, we'll just. Thank you very much. We're, we're, nieces and nephews and godchildren all over. Well, there you uh, go. No kids yet. There you go. Okay, so so recently uh, the folks up in Nashville mm -hmm. uh, kind of decided for us about this residency uh, mm -hmm. plan, uh, kind of opening that up. First of all, how do you feel about that? I think it's necessary. Obviously, I would love for Memphis to be a community where everybody says, this is where I want to you know, start my family, to make a home, to build a business. Uh, but there are some people for a multitude of different reasons that have chosen to you know, to live otherwise. Maybe they want a more rural lifestyle. Maybe it's something related to their spouse or where their kids go to school that they don't live in the city of Memphis. And when I look at how short we are in police officers, we have to have an adequate complement. And uh, as long as their heart is in the right place and, you know, their butt's getting the job done, I don't matter or I don't care nearly as much where they lay their head at night. I've never called 911. I've never heard of anyone calling 911 and asking the fire department or the police department, you know, what neighborhood they live in. Yes, it would be ideal. And I think it would be better for the community if we had those public safety officers day in, day out, more visible in the community. And that would be more stabilizing factor. But the number one responsibility right now is to try to reduce the crime, to try to keep people safe. And we can't do it with the levels we have. So expanding residency was a way to increase our recruiting pool by 30 to 40 percent mm -hmm. and it cost us zero dollars a lot of other efforts we're going to make to expand recruiting to get more officers have, have a pretty significant expense to it 
And uh, and again, if it doesn't work out or it's not, uh, we're not seeing the the uh, the product that we want in terms of our recruiting classes. We can make adjustments, but I think this is something that had to be tried. If you were to think about it, uh, in terms of, I'm, I know you, you you represent quite a few uh, thousand constituents mm-hmm. out there. Uh, what are some of the issues that uh, you either get uh, called on or emailed or contacted in any mm-hmm. particular way? What are people talking about out there that they want you as the councilman uh, that represents them to try to address? The city council is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. <laughs> and every, every week is an, is an interesting new issue. And that's kind of one of the fun things about it in terms of delving into what's important to the 95,000 people that I represent. Wow. And it can be all over the place. Obviously, uh, a big one that we had in February was the ice storm. And I had my district was hit harder than just about any other district in the city with old trees and people were without power for 10 or 11 days. And so we talk about the, the stability of MLGW and, and how reliable is our power and the infrastructure in making sure that it is in place and that our communications in place and that the, um, that the customer service level is up to par what people deserve to have. Um, and so that was a conversation that really dominated February. Um, March has been a little more quiet. People are getting out. The weather's turning good. They're out in the parks and they're starting to see the litter and the trash. And uh, like I mentioned earlier, the illegal dumping, and that's a frustration. They're ready to be outside again and they want their, they want their streets to be clean. So we're having a big discussion about that tomorrow. So, you know, back to MLGW for a moment, that has been a hot button issue for God knows how many years in terms of the infrastructure. We all know it's, it's poor, uh, it's old, it needs to be replaced. How do we do it? What's the cost? Are they going to be sold up? You know, MLGW. I mean, these are these are some pretty pretty serious uh, uh, questions that 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 have to be that are being posed, and ultimately, I guess, have to be decided by the council. Am I correct? Eventually, you know, there are multiple levels where you've got MLGW management and you've got an MLGW board of five members that makes a lot of their decisions. Okay, uh, but ultimately, the biggest decisions in terms of contracting the budget will flow to the city council for approval. So we have uh, a level of oversight um, that allows us to be involved, you know, in the day to day. And at, at the end of the, it is a division of the city of Memphis. It is owned by the city of Memphis. Right. Um, and and we, we do whatever we can to keep those rates as low as we can for the rate payer and then provide the best and reliable service. And sometimes providing reliable service has, a, you know, an additional cost to it. Um, but we know the pressures people are under. They're trying to pay the, you know, the utility bill, the rent bill, yeah. and the grocery bill at the same time. Yeah. And we are very, very sensitive to that. that. I think that is a benefit of our, the city of Memphis owning MLGW, is that we do have a, a nonprofit focus in mind the way we run it, in the sense where we, 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 there's no corporate entity that's taking 12% off the top, there are no shareholders, the per- focus, first and foremost, is the rate payer. Last question for you. Um, you said that your term is about your term limited, and your term is about to be up uh, mm-hmm. uh, in, in just a few m- months, and and uh, we don't know what the future holds uh, in, in in terms of of, what, of your plans. But are you proud of the work that you have done? I mean, can you leave the city council thinking that you know, yeah, I, you know, I, some things that we need to fix, but overall, I feel fairly good about where we're going to leave it? Ooh, that, that is a tough reflective question. Um, and I have, you know, I haven't fully worked through that. I would say there have definitely been some votes that have been heartbreaking. Mm-hmm. Uh, the majority of budgets that we have had, I have voted against. Um, a good example is I voted against the public safety budget last year because I didn't think it was adequate enough. I didn't think it was enough to get the job done in terms of our priorities. Right. Uh, so I certainly wish things had gone differently in some of the decisions that have been made at council while I've been there. Mm-hmm. Maybe I could have said something different. Maybe, uh, you know, you, you could have presented an alternative argument that would have swayed the room. Um, but overall, what, what I've loved the most is the interaction with the public. Uh, not necessarily my, my, the 12, my 12 colleagues on a city council day where we're hammering out legislation and arguing, but the other 13 days in between a city council meeting where you're in the street, in the park, at the community center, uh, dealing one-on-one with the constituent that's in need. That has been the absolute joy and the fulfilling part of this job. 
and I will miss that. Uh, and I love the relationships and the people that I've gotten to know uh, throughout this process. And, and that I hope to you know continue with and keep going with as long as I can or people allow uh, here in our community. City Councilman Worth Morgan, uh, representing District 5. Uh, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to come on the show. More importantly, thank you for what you do uh, each and every day uh, on uh, all of our behalfs uh, as a member of the City Council. I'm sure we'll be talking again down the road. Thank you for coming on, man. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me, Chip. All right, take care. Have a good night. City Councilman Worth Morgan, ladies and gentlemen, and a uh, lot, lot going on here, a lot of issues that they have to deal with on a daily basis, and, uh, you know, they're doing they're doing the work, that's that's for sure, and uh, we have to continue to hold them accountable uh, as, as, you know, we are the ones who vote them into office. Thank you for coming on, uh, Councilman uh, Morgan. We're going to take our final break, and when we come back, I'm going to talk with a a young man who I have really grown to admire over the last few months. As I stated earlier, April is National Donate Life Month, and uh, the man I'm going to speak to knows a little bit about donating uh, and how important it is and how special it is. This is Real Talk Memphis. Uh, I'm Chip. I hope you come right back. Uh, We're going to take a quick break. See you in a minute. If you like Real Talk, here's a way you can get involved. Do you have a show topic idea or suggestion? Want to be considered a guest or have a guest idea? Then send Chip a message on his Real Talk show page and you can be a part of the Real Talk experience. So as he always says, go out and tell somebody. We'll be right back. Memphis Listening Lab proudly supports WYXR. They provide a curated collection of music and music history, a forum for music-related talks and performances, and a music education, appreciation, and experimentation space located in Crosstown Concourse. The lab is open Tuesday through Saturdays from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. You can find out more information on their Instagram page at Memphis Listening Lab or on their website at memphislisteninglab.org. Get Real Talk on the TuneIn mobile app under WYXR, and he's now streaming live on Facebook. And you can also catch a rebroadcast on YouTube. Just put WYXR in the search box and hit subscribe. Now back to more Real Talk with Chip Washington. And welcome back to the big broadcast on this uh, Monday evening. Glad to have you along with us. And uh, I need to set this up before I, I bring in my, my, my next guest. Uh, as I stated earlier, April is National Donate Life Month. And that didn't mean a whole lot to me uh, before November 23rd of last year uh, when uh, I was able to donate a kidney to someone in order for my wife to receive a kidney uh, that she desperately needed because of uh, her kidney disease. Well, uh, the young man I'm about to uh, to talk with, um, he was the inspiration for that because I don't know if you remember a few months ago, there was a story in the Daily Memphian uh, featuring uh, Lee Gio- Giovanetti and uh, his, his friend uh, who was in desperate need of a kidney. And Lee uh, was a very determined individual and said, you know, at first – uh, he, he couldn't find a match. The, his friend couldn't find a match. And there was a lot of other issues. There were health issues. There were this and that. And Lee um, was a very determined fella and said, look, whatever I can do to try to help him, uh, you just need to sign me up uh, to do that. And long story short, he did become a kidney donor. And I leaned on him for uh, inspiration and some education. So uh, please welcome to uh, Real Talk uh, Lee Giovanetti. And Lee, you know, I haven't talked in a while, but how are you, my friend? Oh, man, I miss, you know, the top of the world. I'm doing great. Doing great. Well, look, it is. And I know you're doing well, too. I, I am. Thank you so much. And, and, and thank you for being on the show and talking a little bit about this. You were the first person I thought of, uh, you know, when this time came around. 
um, because it, as I stated, you know, your story um, provided so much hope and inspiration, not only to so many people, but in particular, uh, you know, to, to, to me and Wanda's uh, uh, story as well. And when I saw the story and I read the story about the, the courageous uh, uh, a donation that you made uh, to help Clemenzo, uh, I had to reach out to you. So I, I, I called, uh, you know, David at the newspaper and asked him if he could put us in touch. And uh, from the time I first talked to you about this whole process, you laid it out for me, you explained it uh, and in detail. And uh, I really want to thank you for all of your help, your support and your prayers in this in, in, in this effort. Well, Chip, you know, uh, I appreciate it, but uh, <laughs> I kind of look at that like I look at having the opportunity to uh, extend Colenzo's life and change his daily life. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm privileged. I was glad to be able to be in a position to, to talk to you about, to you about it, and, and uh, the end result that you and Wanda got was a blessing to me, frankly. Well, it, 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 it really was. And, of course, you know, I remember we all talked right before, uh, you know, the operation day on the 23rd of November. And, and even Clemenzo talked, talked to her as, as well about this. But, we, you know, having gone through the experience uh, that now both of us have gone through, um, talk a little bit about, about, the, about that whole experience and, and really how it left you as a person uh, not only to be able to help, but the aftermath of it all. Well, you know, uh, your radio show may not last, may not have enough time <laughs> for me to answer that question, but I'll give you kind of a short and sweet. Okay. You know, I had a, uh, I had a brain tumor back in 2000 and uh, I had brain surgery and it wasn't supposed to work out very well for me. And it, and obviously it did. And we all believe that it was a miracle uh, at that point in time. Uh, my family believed that, as did I. And my friend Colenzo was very, very involved in helping us get through that process, you know, with our faith. Mm -hmm. So fast forward to this particular situation. And, you know, I didn't know anything about it. Uh, never gave it any thought. Uh, never did any research, per se, until the situation came up. And frankly... I've always wondered, you know, what it's like to, to basically change somebody's life. I'm a businessman, um, never had that opportunity, have friends that are physicians. I have a friend that uh, runs the Shelby County Drug Court, and I always have told, uh, I'm on his board, I've always told Judge DeWire, you know, I'd love to be, spend one day in your shoes and know what it's like to change someone's life and change their family's life. and. Right. That opportunity came along, you know, frankly, um, for me to be in a position to be able to do that. And it really didn't, it didn't really require a whole lot of, uh, once I, once I found out I was able to, from a health perspective, and I knew from a little bit of the research that I had done that, you know, these things were not, uh, you know, they had very, very high degree of success. The physician that did my procedure, and I think he did yours too, uh, the same guy that did Steve Jobs, uh, the founder of Apple. So I figured if it was good enough for Jobs and he evaluated the risk, uh, it's good enough for me. So that's really kind of it in a nutshell. And uh, I have always viewed it as a as an honor and a privilege. And uh, it's just great every day to maybe know you played a little bit of a part in changing people's lives. You know. Absolutely. Uh, and, you know, I think the thing about all of this uh, that was really, you know, as I was I was getting into it, you know, as I was talking to you and doing my own research and, you know, kind of, you know, preparing for all of this. And, and as I told folks, I had to lose, you know, about 30 pounds and, you know, I had to get my blood pressure regulated in order to be able to qualify for all of the tests. Because, you, as you well know, they give you the, you, you go through a lot of testing uh, in advance uh, right. to, to as a donor or a potential donor. Um, but a lot of folks uh, don't really know. Uh, that there are other options available in terms of organ donation. Now, in terms of the kidney, this pairing program uh, is, is, is really something that I really don't think a lot of people know about, Lee, and, and, and I think that more people really should check, check that aspect out in terms of trying to maybe help somebody. No, I, I totally agree with you, Chip. You know, I never, like I said, I, I, never, 
I never knew anything about this, never crossed my mind. And then when it uh, turned out that I wasn't a good match for Colenso and I wasn't going to be able to, uh, you know, his body would not accept my, my kidney. You know, that was a real downer after what we had gone through. And then when I learned about the National Kidney uh, uh, Registry, which is the program, you know, it just, it just seemed to make so much sense to me. I mean, you know, and people ask, well, you know, uh, did you ever hesitate because your friend wasn't getting your kidney? Right. And I tell them, not, never even gave that any thought, you know, because it really wasn't all about him having my organ. That wasn't really what it was all about. It was all about him needing an organ to better the quality or extend the quality of his life. And I had an organ that, you know, basically would make that happen. And that was really all there was to it. And when you really do the research, I mean, I think they told me that, I think they told me that, that, that my kidney donation, there was a chain of, I think, seven or eight right. people that benefited from that process. Right. But, you know, I mean, that's like getting a, you know, a four or five to one. Uh, for, <laughs> so for me, it's, it's just amazing, you know, really. It, it 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 really is, and 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 you know before uh, before I let you go, and I and I, I thought it was very important to have you on, and I'm going to do more stories about this uh, um, uh, before uh, the end of the month. I know Wednesday is uh, National Donor Day, and uh, they're going to have a ceremony at uh, Methodist Hospital uh, at the flagpole there, where they raised the I guess they raised the flag there uh, in honor of those mm-hmm. of us who have donated. Uh, it was life changing for me as it was for you, um, and not only being able to uh, directly donate a kidney to someone I may never know, uh, but you know, which allowed her uh, wander through the chain uh, to be able to get hers the same day was absolutely just extraordinary for me. And uh, I just want to say thank you, and I, I I said it to you many times, but publicly to say thank you for for you and your wife and your family and Clemenzo for, for being so supportive um, of us in this process. I mean, it was a challenging process to be, to be sure, but you walked me through every single step of it. You told me what was going to happen, what to expect and uh, that we, you know, we would bounce back and uh, uh, you know, things have, things have gone well. She's doing very well and uh, back to work. As a matter of fact, today was her first day back to work. And, uh, wow. you know, I'm, 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 I'm hanging in there for an old dude myself. So uh, thank you for everything you've done to help me. Thank you for us. Well, look, Chip, you know, thank you. And you'll, you may be experienced it one day. You know, we got a lot of, a lot of satisfaction and, 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 and felt great after it was over with, though. It was kind of over. And frankly, when you called me, and my wife and I would pray about you and pray about Wanda and hope it would work. So when it worked for you, it was almost kind of like going through it again without having to check into the hospital. We got a lot of benefit out of your process. Wow. Well, listen, man, thank you. Thank you for coming on Real Talk, man. I really appreciate you. And, uh, and, uh, and like I say, I wish you nothing but the best of health and Clorenzo uh, down the road as well. But thanks for coming on, man. And you, you be, you be, okay, you be safe. Chip. Okay, take care of yourself, man. You too, buddy. All right, take All right, care. Take care, All man. Right, thanks. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye. Well, what a way to end the show. Now, uh, as Jack plays us out of here, um, I just want to uh, encourage all of you. There's a lot of folks with a lot of needs out here. Lots. Um, a lot of health needs, critical health needs, serious health needs. And uh, I don't know if it's something that you all feel interested in, wanting to be a part of being a, uh, an organ, uh, to donate an organ. But you might want to give it a shot. You might want to think about it. You might want to do some research on it. You might want to check it out because there are so many people who are just waiting for someone to open up their, their heart and say, yeah, I'm willing to do whatever it takes to, to help another person. So in the meantime, uh, if the Lord says so, we'll be back here. Same time, same station, same chair, and we'll try to do it all over again. I thank all my guests for being here tonight. It was a great show, and I hope you thought so as well. So for Jack, for Lola, for Nicole, and for me, uh, from all of us here at Real Talk, I'm Chip, and I'm out.